What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to save the output of your database to an Excel file with Python and Kinter. All right guys, we were gonna move on to searching the database for specific records, but I thought before we did that, we should take a minute to talk about exporting our database to an Excel file uh, outside of our app if we ever wanted to do that. So we're gonna do that in this video. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee at just $27, which is insanely cheap. And I should mention that price is going up probably in the new year. So if you want to lock in that $27 price, I'd jump on that right away. So, okay, let's go ahead and run our app. We could go pythoncrm.py. And we pull this over. This is where we left off. If we click this list customers button, this is what we get. We've only got two records in our database and we're just throwing this up on the screen and the, this isn't very fancy and we're gonna make this look nicer later on. But for now, this is what we have. So what I wanna do now is just add a little button down here that allows us to export this to an Excel file, you know, a CSV file, a comma separated uh, file. So, you know, you've got all this stuff in a database in your GUI, there's chances chances are you're gonna to wanna to export this at some point. So let's do that real quick in this video. So the first thing we, we have to do is come up here to the very top of our program and we wanna import something called CSV. This, this stands for comma separated values. It's just what, you know, Excel spreadsheets are CSV files usually. Databases, when you export them, they're comma separated values. So each row is gonna be separated by a comma and it's just gonna to output to a text file. So we want to do that, let's go ahead and save that. Now let's head down to our list customers function here. This is the function that actually looks up the stuff in our database and puts it out onto the screen. We did all this in the last video. So now inside of this function, you can see we're tabbing over from our list customers. So one tab over, we want to just create a button. So let's go, let's call it CSV comma separated value uh, button. And this is going to be a button and it's gonna be in our list underscore customer underscore query window, right? And we want the text to say what? Save to CSV or save to Excel. If you use Excel as your spreadsheet uh, thing. You can open a CSV file in Excel. You can also open it in a, just a notepad and we'll, we'll look at both of those. So, all right. Next, we want to give this a command. And we want this to be a lambda because we need to pass something in. Now, look at this. This looks like a capital L. It is not. This is a lowercase l. For some reason, Sublime makes this lowercase l's look like capital L's. So make sure that that is a lowercase l. And we want a colon. And then let's create a function. Let's call it write to CSV. And what we want to pass in here is our result. Okay, so save this. Now, I'm just gonna copy this while we're here. Now, what is this result? Well, if you remember in the last video, that's this result right here, which is this result right here. So we're querying the database. We're saying, hey, grab everything in our database and pull it out and slap it in this result variable. So result holds all of our database data at this time after we've you know gone through here and done all these things. So, okay, we've created our button. Now on the next line, we need to actually, you know, throw it up on the screen. So let's go CSV underscore button dot grid. And we want this to be row equals something and column equals something. And we want this in the first column. So that's column zero. And what row do we want this in? Well. Let's see, we've been doing row stuff here and we, we created a, an index for that. So we could just take the last index number and use that. So let's go index plus one. So index, the last number of index is the last row we have. We wanna go one more down, so we just go plus one. All right, so that should work. So now we need to create this function. So when we click the button, this function gets called. So we can put this anywhere. I'm just gonna put it right above here. And so let's go 
I don't know, write to CSV Excel function. I don't know, call it whatever you want. Now we want to go define and then I'm just going to paste that in and we want to pass in the result colon. And again, this is a lowercase l. And why are we doing that? Because down here in our button, we passed in result. So we want to accept that into our function up here, right? So okay, so now we need to do some Python CSV code. So I'm gonna go with open. Now let's just name what do we want to call the the Excel file that we're going to save, I'm just going to call it customers. Dot CSV. Right. And now we need to tell it the read or write method or function, right. So whenever you're reading or writing to files in Python, you have to tell it how to do that. And there's like 10 different ways you can do it. You can read the file only you can write to the file only you can read and write to the file, you can read, or you can write to the beginning of a file, you can write to the end of a file. That's just a basic Python thing. I'm gonna let you Google all those things. Just Google Python read write methods or something and you'll see a big list of them. I'm going to use a and a stands for append. So this will open the file, and it'll go down to the last line and then add stuff from there. So if we change our database later on, and we want to save it again, it will it will save and we've already saved it before it will go down to the last line of that file and then save the whole database again. So keep that in mind, that may not be what you want. So but just for our purposes, I think that's going to be fine. So, you know, if we click the button three times, it's going to add our database three times to the CSV file, which is probably something you may not want, but I'm just going to do a for now. So we want to open this file, and we want to call it as f and this is just a variable that we can use to do stuff with as you'll see. So I'm gonna go w equals and you can use any variable. And I'm going to call the CSV dot writer, which comes in that CSV package we installed earlier, or we imported earlier. And I'm going to call f, oops, f, which is what we just called this thing right here. And what we want to do is call dialect equals Excel. And there's a bunch of ways you can do this as well. I'll let you Google different methods. If you don't want to save it as a Excel thing, you can look and you can learn all about that CSV program that we just imported. I'm not going to get into the details in this video. So okay, so now we can go w dot right row, and then pass in whatever we want to pass in what do we want to save to this file, we want to save the result. And the result is just whatever was in our database, right? So we're creating this w and now we're using this right now method definitely did not spell that right, right now, there we go. And we're passing that uh, the stuff from our database into it. So that should be the all, all there is to it. Let's fire this up and see if it worked. I almost certainly messed this up. So let's close our program and run it again. And when we do we can click list customers. And the button is not showing up. All right, what did we do? Let's take a look. Oh, list Custer query, I misspelled that. <laughs> All right, so what was that? Yeah, list customer query. There we go. Why didn't you tell me I did that? <laughs> All right, run this thing again. Pull this over, click this. Okay, so we've, we've got this thing here. We've got this button saved to Excel. We can click it. Nothing appears to happen. But if you then go in now, this is going to save this file in whatever directory you're in. So we're in the C GUI directory. So I can just open up my GUI directory right here. And I'll see inside of here this customers.csv. Why is that? Well, that's because where did we save this? We saved it, we called it customers.csv. So that's the file you want to look for. And there it is. So now if I double click this, Excel opens and nothing has happened. All right, so what did I do wrong? Let's look through here. W dot right. Oh, man, I misspelled this twice. It's right row. Okay, right row. All right, so go ahead and save this. And let's try it one more time. Close our old program. Pull up a terminal, run it again. List the customers, click Save to Excel. 
pull up our thing here, double click this and boom, here it is. Now you'll notice it's all smushed together. And what this is doing is it's in each column here, it's putting one record and it's just putting them this way instead of this way. So if you go to this one, you can control C and then paste it here if you want. This maybe looks a little better, right? But if you have a thousand records, you're not gonna wanna do that for everything, but you could still, it, all the data is here, right? You can still do Excel-y type things. Now, you'll notice that each one of these items is in one row instead of having them all in their own uh, column or, or something like that. So if you wanna tweak this, you can get into the the CSV coding out the wazoo and do whatever you want. I'm just showing you a very basic way to do this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and let's modify this a little bit to make it a little bit more readable. Let's pull back our code. And in the write to CSV section here, we're just writing, we're using the write row function. And we have a lot of different rows and we maybe don't wanna put them all on the same column. We can, we can change that around by just kinda, let's create a for loop. Let's go for, and what do we wanna call this? Records, or for record in result. And then we can say this, but instead of printing the whole result, we just wanna print a single record. So this might work, I think. So let's pull this up, close it, and run it again. And when we do, we can click list customers, and we can click the save to Excel button. And when we do, here's our customers.csv, and now they're sort of on their own line, and they're, these things are in their own columns, which may be more like what you wanna do, right? Uh, there's a space between each one. I don't know what that's all about, but you can delete those. You can run a little macro or something to delete those if you want to. No big deal. So I'm not going to try and fix that. And again, you can learn all about the CSV program that we just imported earlier. Uh, if you want, it's way too much stuff to get into in just one little video like this. I just want to show you a very basic way that you can do this. And this is looking pretty good. Now we open this in Excel. You can open this in, like I said, a notepad. You just right click and click open with notepad. And when you do, you see the same sort of thing. They're comma separated values, right? CSV, and that's cool. So that's a real quick and easy way you can save to an Excel file or a comma separated value file. Um, like I said, there's lots of other ways you can do it that are maybe even better. I'll let you get into that on your own if that's something you really wanna do. But this is just a, a quick way to do it that works good enough for me. And so I'll leave it at that. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. You pay just $27 for now to access all my courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 60,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.